So our project revolved around an infusion pump, which is a medical device that delivers fluids, such as nutrients and medications, into a patient's body in a controlled amount. We were tasked with automating this testing process. So first, here's an overview of all the components. Here's our program on our computer, which is connected to our pump automator. So you can see our Arduino is our controller, the pump situated in the housing, and all our actuators there as well. Here's our pressure sensor and automatic clamp. And the tubing finally leads into a mass balance where we'll, where we'll record the mass over time. And as we start up this test, um, you can see that an actuator extends to press that on and off button. And then on the right side with the screen image feed, you can see the startup sequence. In this case, we caught an alarm. And so after detecting the alarm, we decided to clear it automatically using OCR, and then we'll let the rest of the startup sequence do its thing. We needed to come up with a way to figure out a way to automatically link all clinicians and medical devices to the patient in that particular room. So our system is able to track the location of medical devices, healthcare professionals, and patients within the ICU. The medical devices used are directly paired with a caregiver using the device, and we are able to log all personal location, personnel locations and medical device usage to be displayed within a database in both the unauthorized and unauthorized. Here is a sample of what that database actually looks like. So here's a glimpse of our final working system. So here's the NFC portion, um, outlining a clinician logging into a medical device. This represents the room RFID reader, picking up clinicians and patient tags in the vicinity. And here the database and display is then updated with information from both subsystems. We had the opportunity to work at their Edgewater location. One of their visions for that location is to add um, a residential addition above the restaurant to rent out as like an Airbnb for an additional revenue stream. Over to the right corner, you can see the gray area of the roof that does not have the platform on it for the garden. And that's the area that we're gonna be working in to design a residential addition that is also in line with the sustainability um, mission of the business. We followed as many regulations as possible. Some of these include international building codes, international residential codes, the Municipal Code of Chicago, and any other applicable safety codes. In addition to these, we also looked at green building standards such as LEED, Passive House, and Green Building Challenge. Here we have our thermal regulation. Next is the thermal regulation regarding passive design. The first diagram shows the angles of the summer and the winter sun that are specific to the uncommon ground location from the east elevation. Factors about the structure that we had to consider were ensuring that the structure was stable and that there was structural integrity. We looked at both the platform needed to build our unit and the actual unit itself. So our, we focused a lot on the lightness of materials, their sustainability, and as well as their aesthetics. Work is to was to design a biological treatment process in order to reduce algal growth and the frequency of pool drainage. We are proposing an attached growth biological treatment process as our design. So the concept behind this process is that um, we would implement a bioreactor into their wastewater treatment system, which is essentially just a large container that plastic media would then be placed into. Well, for our design, we were deciding between using either algae or bacteria for our attached growth. The tanks with the algae went from basically nothing besides a couple clumps to the bottoms and the mesh bag and the bioballs actually having some attached growth. Then we did the bacteria. The bacteria does look like it takes up the whole tank. The growth itself wasn't very evident on the bioballs. When we examined it after the week and a half, the bioballs didn't really have anything growing on, their, on them. It was more on the water and the water just stayed pretty murky. So we kind of concluded that the algae would be a much more reliable uh, attached biofilm growth rather than the bacteria. The project is to develop a system 
that allows the zoo employees to take remote temperature as well as humidity readings from the habitat. Um, this system that we designed must also send out alerts to users if the pangolin habitat becomes unsafe um, for the animals. So the website is the central piece of this project. Um, it is where the user is able to see and download the data taken from the habitat, as well as change any parameters associated with the safety ranges and alerts. This is just a short video of the system as it's implemented. You can see I'm warming up the sensor with a hairdryer to um, simulate an increase in temperature in the environment. Um, on the top of the video, you could see the temperature and humidity graph. Um, and if I reload the page, you can see a spike in the temperature, which is caused by um, the heating up of the sensor with the um, hair dryer. This spike in temperature caused the upper temperature parameter to be passed, um, which means that the user would receive an email, very similar to the one on the screen right now, alerting them to any potentially dangerous conditions um, and telling them to potentially go and see if there's anything wrong. Sponsor One Energy places between one and six turbines on a manufacturing plant's location and generates power for that manufacturing plant. Um, and so the smaller obstructions, for example, houses nearby or the manufacturing plant itself, it's thought that there might be an influence. And so the problem that we were dealing with was to see what kind of influence these small obstructions have on the wind flow. So this is the model we chose. This is the standard K epsilon model. It calculates turbulence near the walls of an obstruction or of our model. The software we used was called the FEA tool, which stands for Finite Element Analysis Toolbox. So first we did three case studies. These case studies were based off the Sedvo cube model. We measured the height, so we varied the height of the object, the length of the object, and then the velocity that we input into the um, model. And so to sum up our results of the case studies, the obstruction height impacts the wind velocities at low altitudes, um, but the wind velocity returns to input speeds at one building height above the building. Um, but both the obstruction length and the input wind velocity do not have a significant impact.